Hey there Windowers and welcome to another episode of Windows on Windows, part of the series on the development of Windows 8. In this episode we'll be taking a look at Windows 8 build 7899, a milestone 2 build compiled on the 9th of December 2010. This build demonstrates an impressive amount of progress since build 7880 from around one month prior. So if you're ready to see the first iterations of features that would go on to become iconic parts of Windows 8, such as a new settings app, lock screen and touch optimized version of Internet Explorer, let's take a look and let's start. So here we are at the desktop of Windows 8 build 7899 and before we get started this would be the part of the video where I quickly recap the setup procedure that I showed at the beginning of the video. However, setup appears unchanged since build 7880 so without further ado let's dive in. Now firstly and similarly to both build 7850 and 7880 this build includes a redesigned upgrade version of setup. Previously in build 7850 and 7880 it was called setupclient.exe however as you can see here it's now been renamed to setup.exe and with that has replaced the old Windows 7 style setup program. There are some very minor UI changes but other than that this looks exactly the same as the one seen in build 7880. Coming back to the desktop and the only change here is that we now have a new default user account picture which bears more than a passing resemblance to the MSM Messenger aka Windows Live Messenger logo. Now we also have the addition of two new animated user pictures. Unfortunately they're not functional everywhere in the user interface at this point and they also would not make the final release of Windows 8. If we now go to personalization, you'll see that we no longer have an option to set the Windows Classic theme. Now, in the previous build we looked at, which is build 7880, the option did still exist, although the theme itself was broken. But here in build 7899, make no mistake, the Windows Classic theme is officially dead. Perhaps unexpectedly, as it's not something that gets changed very often during Windows development, this build introduces a new black screen of death. And no, you did hear me correctly, I did say black, not blue, which marks the first time that the screen of death has been updated since Windows XP back in 2001. And as you can see, aside from the color change, which unfortunately wouldn't make the final release of 8, because let's be honest, it's kind of awesome, the rest of the screen has also been redesigned, looking a lot similar to the final version we would see in Windows 8. Now if you watched any of the earlier videos in the series you may remember that Microsoft implemented a security feature in Windows 8 builds known as Red Pill to conceal features in the event of any builds getting leaked and that to access these features you need a tool to reconstruct the necessary files and permissions. The most famous of which is known as Redlock and just like in the previous videos I've already downloaded this so I'll just run it now and once the machine has rebooted we'll be able to take a look at these hidden features. So here we are back at the desktop of Windows 8 build 7899 and just like in the last video let's take a look at the start screen as our first stop without red pill. Now the start screen has come on leaps and bounds since build 7880 with many new features and quality of life improvements. Firstly we've now lost the search button from the top right and instead we have our user picture volume and clock displayed and it seems at the moment at least that none of these are functional and the only one that would eventually make its way into the final release of 8 is the user picture. Although interestingly the search button would return to the start screen but not for another four years eventually arriving again in Windows 8.1 update 1 in 2014. We also have a new desktop tile which funnily enough takes us to the desktop and would also remain in the final release of 8 and since we're here I'll quickly show you the updated autoplay dialog box in this build which has been redesigned to fit in better with the new Windows 8 design language and is already quite similar to the one that would be seen in the final version of 8. Now coming back to the start screen, we also have a new other programs view of the start screen which is accessed by dragging down from the top of the screen and which again would remain in the final release of 8 as the all apps screen and seemingly because of this we now have fewer apps pinned to the start screen by default. We also have some new animations that you may have already noticed which are quite nice and less variety in tile colours compared to build 1780. Finally, there is a registry key to enable backgrounds and accent colors on the start screen, which is another feature that would make its way into the final release of 8. However, here we seemingly only have one background, albeit a nice one, and one accent color, which I say lightly as the implementation is obviously unfinished and or broken, as you can see here. 
And as kind of an aside note, this is probably as good a time as any to mention that this build seems to be the first build to introduce mouse gestures. So for example, you can swipe down from the top of the screen as you've already seen to access the other programs view. You can also swipe in from the right with the mouse to access charms. And you can swipe in from the left to access what appears to be an early version of the Windows 8 app switching UI, although here it's obviously broken. Speaking of charms, shall we check in on them? We haven't seen these since build 7850, but for seemingly the first time since that build, the charms bar has now been updated and the selection of options has slightly changed and at least some of the options now at least partially work, unlike in the last two builds, which is nice to see. And since we're here, I should also mention that the search function now has the ability to search by settings in this build, another thing which would remain in the final release of 8. Now, just like in build 7899, we also have a new login screen activated with Red Pill in this build, which looks really nice and not dissimilar to how it would appear in the final release of 8. We also now have functioning pattern logon in this build, as you can see here. And in a similar vein, we also have a brand new lock screen in this build. And again, this is similar to how it would appear in the final release of 8. Additionally, the new full screen out of box experience that we first saw in build 1780 has been updated here, looking much closer to the final version. Now let's talk about new and changed apps in this build because we've got quite a selection here. Firstly, I'll quickly run you through what's changed with the new apps that we first saw in build 7850. The PDF reader is pretty much identical except that it now runs full screen. The webcam app has had a slight redesign and now additionally has functional buttons and options. The new task manager has a redesigned programs tab now called processes as would be the case in the final release of Windows 8. We also have some new so-called immersive apps in this build, which is seemingly the term Microsoft was using during development to refer to Windows 8's new style full screen touch optimized apps. And the first called immersive settings is an early version of what would become the settings app in Windows 8. Now this is infamous because it was the first time that in Windows settings had moved out of control panel and also kind of infamously, we're still stuck in that phase now where in Windows 11, for example, we still have the settings app, which albeit is much more developed than it was back in Windows 8 days, but we also still have a lot of settings that are still, even now, stuck in the control panel. There's also Immersive Browser, which again is an early version of what would become the touch optimized version of Internet Explorer that shipped with Windows 8. And finally, we have, albeit not functional, a very early version of what would become the Windows 8 Store app, which incidentally has very recently been traced back all the way to build 7777 from July 2010, where it was known as Win Store, before later being renamed to MS Help as a way to apparently obfuscate its function for any outsiders that got their hands on the builds. Finally, it's possible to remove the start button from the taskbar in this build by way of a registry key. So it seems that the idea of removing the start button, which infamously would be the case in the final release of 8, was something that Microsoft was thinking about even at this relatively early stage of development. And this very daring change would mean that Windows 8 would be the first version of Windows since Windows NT 3.51 back in 1995 to ship without a start button. And that is everything that I've discovered in build 7899. As usual, please let me know in the comments below if you found anything yourself in this build that I may have missed. If you enjoyed the video, a thumbs up would be much appreciated. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.